Hello everyone, now that the first character that specifically synergizes with Burning, namely Emily, is released, I feel like it's a good time to have a talk about it. This is not a guide in any shape or form, this video doesn't have any other purpose than sharing my thoughts of potential problems with the Burning reaction itself and maybe spark a discussion in the process. Long story short, burning can be used to set up melt or overloaded, which is great, but if you want to build a team around dealing significant damage with burning itself, then I feel like we do run into a couple of problems. It can still work fine, so it's not a lost cause, unlike Shatter for example, which most people have probably forgotten by now, and rightfully so. Anyway, let's get into it. First of all, really quick on how to trigger it, when you apply a Dendron Pyro Aura to an enemy, it will burn as long as both auras persist and the damage is determined by the character applying the second aura, same as any other elemental reaction. So far, nothing too unusual. Now as for the duration of burning, the Dendro Aura gets consumed in the background until it runs out, while only burning is displayed on the health bar of the enemy. It happens kind of fast, which almost makes it seem like it's a fixed duration, but that's not true, as we will see when there are subsequent Dendro applications to already burning targets, which will override the underlying Dendro Aura with a new one, and assuming the new Dendro application comes from a different character, it also instantly changes the damage of the burning reaction due to the difference in state. Deaths. And that will obviously serve as proof of the existence of this hidden Dendro Aura in the background. I also used Dendro to showcase this year, but the same also applies to the underlying Pyro Aura. Subsequent Pyro applications will also essentially hijack the burning damage. Ironically enough, Emily herself is probably the biggest offender here, since she has a decent off-field dendro application. As you see in the background footage, the burning damage fluctuates to an insane degree depending on whether it's Emily or Nahida triggering it. Nahida in this case is built on 800 elemental mastery and Emily has about 70, which are pretty standard builds for these characters. But the unfortunate reality is there doesn't seem to be a reliable way to control the reaction order to make use of Nahida's high elemental mastery stat for burning damage in a team like this. To be fair, Nahida's elemental skill obviously mitigates this to a certain extent, it always triggers right after triggering an elemental reaction, and if you have multiple high elemental mastery characters like Sucrose or Kazo as well, it still works out decently, you can kind of outpace Emily's application rate, which is why I said in the beginning it's not really a lost cause. The weirdest thing about this is just, if you want to build a team dealing around, uh, sorry, around dealing burning damage reliably, then the best thing you can actually do is to probably just remove Emily or in fact any character who constantly applies Dendro or Pyro with low elemental mastery. The way Emily works is just, you effectively just want her in teams who benefit from the utility aspect from burning, the Pyro application for melt or Lenny teams for example, but if you want to actually do burning damage, she is kind of a handicap. There's one problem which feels a little less important to me. Really quick though, in case you're not familiar, the Genshin community coined the term transformative reactions to describe any re elemental reaction that basically creates a new damage instance. For example, if you trigger Bloom or Overload it, it does damage separately from the skill triggering it, same as burning. On the other hand, if you do melt damage for example, it just increases the damage of the skill triggering the reaction which is something people call amplifying reactions. In my opinion, there's one very obvious difference between burning and other transformative reactions though. Obviously, I'm talking about it being a damage over time effect directly applied to the target, which is actually pretty relevant. First of all, there's very little you can actually do with the builds of your characters to increase the damage of transformative reactions. Aside from the character's level, you only care about elemental mastery, that's it. Attack, defense, HP, crit or any type of damage bonus are all irrelevant. That's why Hyperbloom teams do so well with very little investment, they just don't need any stats. Team compositions and rotations are major factors though, for instance one thing you can do is shred resistances with for example Zhongli or certain artifact sets like the Viridescent set, but to get to the relevant part, the one thing you can look for is a very high elemental application rate. If you can build a team that triggers Hyperbloom twice a second, it will obviously do way better than triggering it once a second. As mentioned earlier, you can't do it with burning, you will just override it over and over again. To me, it just feels like damage over time effects can't have the same scaling as the rest of the transformative reactions. 
Those were the issues I have. Now, what can be done, what can be expected about this from the developers? To be honest, I don't have the background to say if it's possible to change the system specifically to target burning without messing up everything else or the other reactions. We also need to keep in mind that burning is used as setup for melt or overloaded, so it's kind of hard to separate those when it comes to buffs. What's the point of buffing burning if it would also indirectly buff melt? Again, talking about systems just seems like a complicated issue. I already drew some comparisons to the Bloom group. Bloom seems to be a setup for Hyperbloom or Bergeon more than anything, and again, Burning can enable Melt or Overloaded, so the parallels are there. So I wouldn't be entirely surprised if the solution would be kind of similar to make Burning itself more attractive. Will this be a new unique reaction like Nilu enables? Possibly, but I would at least expect a character similar to how Chevrolet works for Overloaded, who forces you to only play Dendro and Pyro, and then gives you some benefits specific to just burning, which should justify giving up the other elements. For example, something basic like resistance shred and elemental mastery would be likely. What I would like to see ideally though is something that addresses the consistency issues. For example, the passive skill of this new utility character could also make it so that burning damage only scales of this new character's elemental mastery. I know it feels kind of cheap, but at least it would work. <laughs> One thing I always wonder though is why the team slots aren't really used in the design of skills. For example, you could also design this new character, this new utility character in a way that their passive skill makes burning always scale the elemental mastery of the character in your first team slot. It would be pretty interesting to me, slot in Nahida there for example, and you have a high elemental mastery character that triggers a lot of burning with the elemental skill. This could just be interesting design in general for a variety of new mechanics, but again, I don't have the background to say if that's actually realistic in this game. Alright, i leave it at this, I don't want this to be too long, but in case this was the first video you've ever seen of mine, it's kind of unusual to compare to my other stuff where I just focus on the most practical advice or information and guides, but from time to time I like to dive into these theoretical topics and ramble for a while, it's interesting to me and if that also applies to you, feel free to share your own perspective in the comments. Anyway, they announced the Netland preview stream, so you can expect some videos on the new characters here, and until then, have fun and bye bye.